Hi, my name's Ross. I'm the zoo manager here at From England, and welcome to this edition of Zoo TV, where we're going to learn all about the conservation work we do here with our white crowned mangabees, and very excitingly, the brand new exhibit that we're building right now for this species here at From England. So this is our white crowned manga bee exhibit. We have been looking after white crowned manga bees for well over 30 years. In fact, for a long time, we were the only people in the UK looking after white crowned manga bees. Um, they're here as part of a European breeding program. They're here for a very important reason, which is uh, they're an endangered species. In fact, for a long time, they were listed as critically endangered. So endangered is bad. Critically endangered is one step closer to extinction. Thank God they're not critically endangered anymore. They were for a while in the list of top 25 most threatened primates. So they, they were really hanging on. But thanks to a lot of the conservation work that happens in West Africa, the population is a little more secure. And behind me we have four white crown mangabees. So we have Paddy, who's our breeding male, uh, and he's in here with three females. So that's Sophia, who was born here over 20 years ago now. Uh, Christy and Ifana. White crowned manga bees are found in West Africa, uh, in the Ivory Coast uh, and Ghana, so the two countries on the West African coast. Um, they are a, a part of a group of primates that we call Gwenons. They are largely forest dwelling primates. Uh, white crowned manga bees are actually largely terrestrial but of course they will use the trees and climb in the trees very much a rainforest species um, and they're part of a group that we call the sort of afro asian monkeys so these are monkeys that you find throughout africa and asia very distinct from the ones you find in central and south america and one of the cool features we were watching them eat earlier on one of the cool features of this type of um, Afro-Asian monkeys, they've got cheek pouches. So when they're feeding, they'll sort of stuff the food, a bit like a hamster, sort of fill up their mouths full of, uh, full of lots of food. So that's one of those characteristics that you find in the African and Asian primates. So yeah, very distinct, very exciting for us to be able to look after them here. Well, this is going to be our brand new white crowned manga bee habitat exhibit enclosure for a lot of the guests this will be their first entrance into the zoo and they'll see this fantastic exhibit that we're calling the Magambera monkey forest and there's a reason for that is because we we support a, a conservation project in tanzania we've been supporting them for nearly 20 years and they've protected an area forest that is uh, now uh, an ecotourism location with several endemic species of primates, monkeys, uh, and that's Magambera monkey forest. And so this exhibit is to showcase the work that conservation project does with our mangabees and hopefully some other species as well to come in the future. Of course, what's really important for them is that we create a big outdoor space. Um, this is, for our mangabees, this will be a huge, complex outdoor environment. Um, and you can see we've got sort of two areas. So we've got an area that's under cover in the background there. You can see the team are still um, working. It's very much a, a work in progress. This shaded area is getting designed to look just like our offices in Tanzania. Um, so it will have a backdrop that will look very much like the office buildings and the area in front of our office in Tanzania. That will lead through into this wooded area. Manga bees are arboreal, though they will spend a lot of time on the ground. Obviously, like all monkeys, they've adapted to live in the trees and to forage in the trees. So we've tried our best to keep some of the original trees from this area. We've got more trees to plant. There'll be lots of logs and branches and opportunities for them to climb and get up high. 
when you're designing an exhibit for something like a white crowned manga bee, there are guidelines to follow. Now these guidelines are there to help you make decisions, but they'll give best practice. So for instance, how much space they require, how much height they require. One of the things that's really important for us is obviously we create a safe environment. And part of that is making sure the animals are safe and that they can't escape or leave their exhibit. So one of the things that we had to put in place was this four meter high fence here. Now this, was a, this, was, this took a lot of thought and effort, a lot of designing, because we wanted something that blended into the environment. So although it's this big four meter high fence, uh, it's designed to be um, almost invisible. So that from a guest point of view, from the mangabees point of view, it almost seems like a seamless transition into the giraffe habitat next door. So you can see we've got artificial trees, artificial rock work, artificial plants, all designed to create a natural, naturally looking habitat. But around that, we can soften it with things like bark chip, water. Uh, there's going to be uh, vines and lianas that will be hanging down. So it'll be a blend of the artificial so that it's got durability and it lasts. And, you know, we can create these fantastic shapes and really create that sense of what the Tanzanian rainforest looks like. Um, whilst at the same time also then creating a very natural environment using natural materials. So it's kind of a real blend of the two. The work that the team have done in sculpting and designing these, I think is fantastic. Every time we've done this with a project, it's gotten better and better. So that they're really creating that natural environment, naturally looking environment. So it's, yeah, for me, it's really exciting. Whenever you're watching a film, you probably won't ever see the stuff we do, because if you do it well, it's the background, it's the stuff you never look at. So it creates the environment. So in very many ways, it's exactly the same as this. Because most of the time when you come to a zoo or a theme park, you're there for the rides and the animals, all those kind of things. Um, and you just take it for granted that they're in the right environment, they've got the right things behind them, or, you know, it's good for their well-being. So, and that's what we do. So that's the same in film, a lot of the time, the only time you spot things is when they're not right. Because actually I came in one day and they, they were just sort of slapping concrete on and you sort of think like, hold on, you know, <laughs> what on earth are you doing? But then suddenly it transforms into moss. I, I love that. I get really excited about stuff like that. I can't wait to see them in their new exhibit. Um, but sadly for Paddy, he's not going to move with them. So as part of this process to re-energise um, the, the manga bees here at Flamingoland, we're actually going to swap males. So at the start of the year, I wrote to the breeding program, as we do every year with an update. And one of the things we said was we told them that we're building this brand new exhibit and that although we've had Paddy for 10 years, we're not certain that he's a viable male. In fact, we're not certain he's fertile because in that time he hasn't produced any offspring. So working with the breeding program, they have identified a suitable male for us. He's in a zoo in Germany, uh, and the idea is to swap Paddy with that male. Paddy will then go and join an all boy group, a bachelor group, and hopefully be very happy with that group of boys, and we'll get a brand new male. He's about the same age, so he's kind of early teenage years, and he'll be hopefully our new breeding male. Fingers crossed, maybe we'll have young white crown mangabees in the future.